Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Thank God it's Friday. So many people are going to relax. If your job is not going to give you the time to relax, well, just find time uh, one of these days. Maybe your own weekend starts on a Monday, wherever or whenever that may be. Remember that even God had to rest after creating uh, the world in six days. Well, we are here today and uh, we will be looking at some... Uh, uh, issues this morning. The first uh, top, not top trending, but the uh, first hot topic we're going to have is that uh, $150 billion Samoa deal has been signed and it sparks controversy with alleged clause promoting LGBTQ. $1.5 1, 1 billion uh, oil sector divestment deals completed by federal, okay, according to the federal government, will be our next hot topic. But we are going to be looking at the papers as well on what we call uh, of the press, where we look at headlines that made it to the front pages of our national dailies. And then we'll have top trending issues, issues that caught our attention in the last 24 hours. First of all, let's take the quote for the day and then kickstart everything else. In between goals is a thing called life that has to be lived and enjoyed. In between goals is a thing called life that has to be lived and enjoyed. That's according to Sid Caesar. A very apt one. Uh, today is Friday and uh, everybody is being encouraged to find that little time to relax and rest and enjoy the rest of uh, uh, the week because the week ends and then you have some time to rest and begin again on Monday. For a lot of people, that's how their week is. Friday gives you the opportunity to rest. For some others, they don't know where fr when Friday is or when weekend is because their weekend can be any time of the day. Uh, their, their program or their schedule is staggered so much so that they do not um, really have Friday, Saturday, Sunday as weekend for them. But wherever you find that time, live the life with it, which is not work just find some time to relax find some time to sleep find some time to visit friends and family find some time to go uh, maybe sightseeing find some time to to swim if you you can or do some other sports and all that but you know when you're pursuing very great goals and you forget the little things in life that matter at some point in your life you are going to regret that you didn't pay attention to these little things. And one of the things that we see as a very little thing is taking care of ourselves, which eventually is supposed to be the most important, by the way. Uh, we don't check ourselves. We don't want to make friends anymore because we are, we are hustling, as we, we say, especially here in Lagos. The hustle of Lagos will not let you see family, call family, visit friends, and do all the things that you're supposed to do. Like the old saying goes, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. So whoever you are, find time to rest, find time to play, Ve play very hard, find time to relax, find time to enjoy yourself um, with things that are uh, not routine. This thing about rest is an overrated statement. There's nothing like rest. You never get to rest. You just change from routine and then you call it rest. Because there are a lot of people who want to leave the bed because they have slept too much. They're tired of sleeping. If you've never heard that, yes, it's a thing. Uh, they're tired of sleeping. And there are some other people who are thinking about having some time to go and sleep. And they call it rest. When you are on vacation, maybe you go on a trip. Um, you're sightseeing. You're going to a, 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 a reserve. 
and you want to see a lot of things. There are people who are working in that game reserve, for instance, that's where you're going to or a zoo, that want to take a break and go somewhere else. Maybe visit the family at the village. And when they go to the village, they're going to follow their siblings and whoever else is in the village to go to farm. But the fact that they have broken away from, from routine, gives them that psychological feeling that they are resting. So rest actually is a breakaway from routine. That's what gives you rest. So if you're going to the office every day of the week, find time to break that, that, that routine and do something else. Uh, your child is going to school and he feels tired and on the holidays or during the holidays, you're enrolling him or her in a music class and that, that child feels relaxed. The brain is not doing the routine thing that it has always been doing. So find time to relax, find time to rest, find time to take care of the small things that add up to your general well-being as you are pursuing the great goals that you have. Because like they say in that quote, in between these goals is life that you need to live. And if you don't live this life, then what are you doing on earth? Well, uh, enough about that. Um, right now, it's time to go to, uh, to take the top trending issues that we have. First of all, we have that the federal government of Nigeria is warning states and local governments of more flooding. It has warned states and local government to prepare for increased flooding as the rainy season peaks. Based on the 2024 annual flood outlook by the Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency, NIHSA, Minister of Works, Water Resources and Sanitation Professor Joseph Utsev highlighted significant flood risk identified in 148 local government areas across 31 states, urging states to take precautionary measures such as clearing blocked drainage system, relocating residents from flood-prone areas, and constructing flood barriers. Flooding risks are expected to escalate between July and September with incidents already occurring in over 10 states and the Federal Capital Territory FCT since April, resulting in casualties and property damage. The government is also addressing the ongoing cholera outbreak exacerbated by increased rainfall with measures uh, uh, including the formation of a new committee for disaster management, the Clean Nigeria Use the Toilet campaign and efforts to construct buffer dams to mitigate flood risk. Okay, I'm, I'm glad that the government is doing something, including uh, having yet another committee. Uh, you know, I don't know why that is done all the time, committee upon committee. A lot of things have laid down rules, things that uh, some ministries need to do. For instance, the silting of the, uh, the gutters or, or wherever else, the drainage system. Uh, I saw a, a, a photograph yesterday, I think on social media, where one of the candidates of one of the parties gave a photograph or showed a photograph of uh, a drainage system that has been overtaken by weeds. And he said, I have always said that it is better to clear drainages than to break houses or to demolish houses. And in response, the person who was supposed to maybe be remorseful that the government didn't do their part, even though we know that the people in Lagos sometimes can be, you know, a little bit stubborn and doing the things that they're not supposed to do. The only answer the person gave was that, last, last, you're going to be all right. Like, you know, he's just grumbling because he lost the election. When will we stop all this, uh, um, blame game and, and thinking that every constructive, every criticism is because of, uh, of politics and all that. Do your part and let the people do their own part. Let the people see that they need to do their part. Some of these drainages are the way they are because instead of desilting them at the time that they were supposed to be uh, desilted, the, the, the relevant authorities neglected what their job was supposed to be. How many drainages were cleared in Lagos State, for instance, during the dry season? Uh, your guess is as good as mine. So government, do your part. The people living in Lagos and anywhere else that we're experiencing this uh, flooding that could have been avoided, do your part as well. Stop uh, dumping refuse in the drainages and stop doing the things that you are asked not to do. And then government and people, stop these um, uh, acts of uh, building in places that you're not supposed to build. 
drainage system where a lot of people have had their houses broken because they say that they were not supposed to build in a particular place. But I keep asking who gave them the papers, who gave them the authority to build there. Did they just jump into one land and started building? They didn't go to the ministry of uh, whatever ministry they're supposed to go to to get the relevant papers. Heads must begin to roll. As you're demolishing the buildings of the people who built in these places, you should also fish out the people who gave these people the authority to build in that place. Whether they're working in the, in the government or not, these people should be made to face the rot of the law. Because we know that there are the Omoniles that can give you land anywhere. Uh, we know that as well. We, but we also know that there are people in government that also give these people the authority to do what they are supposed to. They are not supposed to do. So all hands must be on deck means that government and the people must work together to make sure that our community is safe, our society is safe. This flooding in most case, cases is avoidable. And where it is avoidable, whoever is responsible should do the needful. Okay, the next one is the Joint Admission and Matriculation Board, JAM, uncovered over 3,000 individuals falsely claiming to be university graduates. JAM Registrar Professor Ishak Oloyede attributed these cases uh, to systemic corruption and he revealed during a meeting with the Committee of Pro-Chancellors of State Universities, Copson, the board has documented these incidents and is addressing the issue of illegal admission in tertiary institutions, considering it an embarrassment and disservice to the nation. This discovery underscores the need for enhanced vigilance and accountability in the education sector to prevent fraudulent activities and maintain the integrity of university degrees. Well, I'm very glad that Jamb is doing this and um, whoever is parading himself as a, a degree holder and is not a degree holder, well, if they can be fished out and, and uh, whatever they need to face is given to them, uh, we will be happy. Let's sanitize our education institutions, let's sanitize our education system, let's sanitize not just the education sector but every sector of our economy, every sector of our national life. We applaud um, Professor Oloide for doing what he's doing, and we hope that he continues to do even more than that. But the universities, we should be asking ourselves what gave rise to uh, this possibility of having a fake uh, university uh, degree? What gave rise to having fake admissions? How do, do these people survive in a school for four to five years to seven years with a fake admission, and then they graduate and some of them have uh, these uh, degrees. Because some of these people that are being termed people with fake degrees may have been to school, even though the, the professor is saying that some of them have never been to the four walls of a school, but some of them have actually been to a school and they have been there for the number of years that they're supposed to be. Uh, meanwhile, their admission was fake. <clears throat> I don't know how that is possible, but it happens only in Nigeria. We hope that sanity uh, returns to education uh, sector. We hope that sanity returns to every aspect of our national life, as I said earlier. So to whoever is vigilant, bravo to you. Now in Bielsa State, the High Court in Ogbia Town sentenced four men to 40 years in prison each for kidnapping a former commissioner for trade and investment, Federal uh, Otokito, on January 20, 2022, and de demanding ransom. The convicts Kingsley Obesi, 24, Joshua Abbey, 32, Gift Damene, Damene uh, 38, and Powell Inigete, Inigite, rather, uh, 36, were found guilty of conspiracy, kidnapping, and unlawful possession of firearms. Police prosecuting counsel Stella Jerry Friday detailed that the kidnappers took Otokito at gunpoint from uh, Otokoti community in Ogbia local government area of Ogbomoturu Bush, or to Ogbomoturu Bush in southern Ijo local government area. The presiding judge, S.W. Amadou Boga, ruled that the prosecution had convincingly proven the charges beyond reasonable doubt, leading to the convict's sentencing. 
whatever can be done to stop this, uh, the tide of uh, kidnappings should be done. It has now become a business uh, where people are engaged in, they kidnap somebody and then they get a ransom and we keep talking about it and um, sometimes I feel even we in the media are, are helping these people to, to be bold to be taking this risk and doing what they're doing because you know they kidnap somebody they demand for a ransom of 150 million and the government or whoever is responsible pays and then we tell the world that uh, they are paid ransom and then another person is there saying ah something must kill a man man die go woman born another that's what we say in nigeria and then he goes and does it himself as well because if he doesn't do it his generation upon generations will never see 150 million uh, doing what will you be doing to get that kind of money at one point? So uh, sometimes I feel that we are doing the society a disservice by by even reporting some of these things, and it, it breaks my heart that uh, people get kidnapped. We remember a judge also in the north that has been kidnapped with the with the three children. The wife and the three children uh, were kidnapped, and one of them was killed because they couldn't produce. Uh, I think it was 300 million at the time they were asking for. Now they're asking for 150 million to be given in three days, and that was like two days ago or so. Uh, where do, does someone go to cough 150 million? How rich will you be? Now you'll be saving money for kidnapping purposes? I, I don't even know how that works. So if insecurity is not uh, stemmed, if insecurity is not removed from our community, uh, then there will be a problem. In the next five years, we don't know where we're going to be, how safe we're going to be. You can't travel anymore uh, freely. And even if you want to take a flight to somewhere else, you cannot pay uh, because the flight uh, money is too much. The, the fare to travel on air is so much. So you will be forced to either travel uh, on the ground, on the road, or you don't travel at all. That's why a lot of people have not been to the village for a very long time or they've not gone to see their loved ones and they can't have their loved ones come to visit them because of all this. So what is the government doing? What are we as the people doing as well? What are the security agencies doing to make sure we have so much confidence to volunteer information so that uh, security can be top notch in Nigeria? All of us have to remember that security is a thing for everybody, not just the police or army or that, just that Nigerians fear the army now, fear the police now, fear um, all the uh, security agencies because what you do today as a good Nigerian may turn out to haunt you tomorrow uh, or even while you are doing it. So if something is not done in that regard, then we don't know what the next five years is going to be. We hope that we'll have that peace that we used to enjoy in Nigeria. I remember when we were traveling at night, a lot of people um, prefer to travel at night. A lot of people prefer to do some things that now they cannot even do. And then you are in, on a bus, and then the next thing you're doing for the next 12 hours, if you are from a place like I come from, that will take you 18 hours to get home. And then you're praying throughout the 18 hours that nothing happens on the road. It's really pathetic. It's really... It, it really breaks your heart if you think about it. Well, uh, that's much, uh, to, so much talk we've had. We're going to take a break now and uh, look at the weather report. After that, we'll return with Off the Press, where we'll be looking at the newspapers. Stay with us.